It's fair to say that the universe is unimaginably vast. The potential real estate for other alien civilizations to exist is infinite if we consider that most stars will have planets around them. Of the stars with planets, most of them will obviously be uninhabitable, perhaps large gas giants or dead rocky worlds, but a small percentage must be somewhat similar to the Earth with the right ingredients for life. It's estimated that the Milky Way galaxy alone has between 200 billion to 400 billion stars and perhaps 100 billion planets. If even just 1% of those planets is Earth-like, which is to say they're capable of supporting an atmosphere that allows liquid water to exist on its surface, temperatures aren't too extreme, and the presence of a magnetic field protects against solar radiation, then we can at least speculate that there must be millions of planets across the cosmos with ideal conditions for life. It's safe to assume that there's been a potential for Earth-like worlds to exist millions of years prior to the formation of planet Earth. If that's the case, then alien life must have evolved on other worlds millions of years ago before life got started on our planet. The conundrum posed by the Fermi paradox is this. If there's such a high probability for life to exist across the galaxy, then where's the evidence for it? If intelligent life evolved elsewhere, a small percentage of these alien life forms must have developed complex societies and possibly even investigated space travel for themselves. If a small percentage of the aliens who developed space travel did so millions of years ago, then they could have theoretically traversed the entire galaxy by now. Basically, where's the evidence for a kind of galaxy-wide united federation of planets? If Earth is the only planet with life, occupying this tiny edge of the spiral arm of one galaxy amongst billions in the universe, well, that's an awful lot of empty space out there that we're never, ever going to get to explore. It's possible that Earth is the well from which all life in the universe springs, of course. Perhaps we are the universe's first experiments with living organisms. If that's true, and we are in fact alone, then it makes our planet and the life forms on it even more precious and important than they already are. I believe this makes it a moral imperative to preserve the life that evolved on Earth, and the only way to do that is to become a truly spacefaring species and propagate all life from our world out into the cosmos, seeding other planets with the life that began here on Earth. Given how humanity seems to be constantly on the verge of self-annihilation through war and conflict or ideological and theocratic oppression, which maintains a constant threat of a return to a potential dark age, it's not difficult to see why possible alien civilizations fail to evolve into truly intergalactic spacefaring races. It's fair to say that most planets won't produce life that's beyond the basic single-cell variety, and of the planets that do produce complex animal life, how many of them will actually produce life that's comparative in intelligence to that of human beings? Considering the history of life on planet Earth, it seems highly unlikely that human-level intelligence will be all that common in the universe. The earliest fossil records on Earth are from 3.5 billion years ago. The dinosaurs only began 250 million years ago, and humans have only existed for less than 200,000 years. Early empirical investigations and the origins of the scientific method date back only a few hundred years, and humanity has only been capable of spaceflight since putting Yuri Gagarin into orbit in April of 1961. That was only 57 years ago. So there's enormous challenges and obstacles to overcome in the evolution and technological development of an advanced human intelligence level species in order for it to reach the stars. And we aren't even remotely close to reaching other solar systems yet. But the stars themselves pose an even greater and more destructive challenge, an environmental one. From comets and asteroids colliding with planets, to the gamma ray bursts and supernovas emanating from distant stars, the universe has plenty of cosmic reset buttons that can wipe out sophisticated civilizations in an instant. Even if Earth isn't the only world to have ever produced life, it's not hard to imagine why we haven't been visited by extraterrestrials given the myriad of internal and external challenges a spacefaring civilization must overcome in order to survive and propagate itself across the galaxy. I happen to believe that it's likely life does exist somewhere out there. I think it's a numbers game. The universe is simply too big to be so empty but the vast majority of worlds with life on them will be home only to simple life or primitive animal life. Of all the millions of different types of life on Earth, only one species here has the capability to even understand this conversation. We've only been capable of receiving radio communications from outer space for a few decades now. Even the planets that have species with human-level intelligence are going to have a hard time achieving the kinds of societal and technological developments that we have. It stands to reason 
reason that most of these intelligent aliens won't ever reach the point where they can build a radio telescope to receive our transmissions, let alone build a spaceship that can traverse light years of space like magic and land on the White House lawn to say hello. It's certainly possible that such an advanced alien species does exist out there somewhere, but it's also possible that they're on the other side of our galaxy, or, somewhat depressingly, much, much further away in another distant galaxy. They'd never even know we were here, and they'd potentially reach a similar conclusion to us, that although it's certainly possible life does exist elsewhere in the universe, it's simply too primitive, too far away, or it faces a catastrophic world-ending apocalypse from its sun or an asteroid, or they may destroy themselves. And I haven't even gotten started on the sci-fi alien invasion possibilities, on whether it's a good idea for us to even send signals out into space with information as to the location of Earth. What if the aliens are hostile conquerors? Well, that's a topic for another video. Let me know your thoughts on the Fermi Paradox and whether you think life is going to be all that common in the universe. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.